It is cold, it's freezing out, but you know what's gonna warm you up? A nice cup of question and answer with cold cracker. Biggest issue of today is that locations have changed. Just for this week, it's not a permanent thing. I know everybody loves when I'm at the yurt with my table and chair, but because of the sweet victory that occurred yesterday with resetting up the classroom area, which I'm under now, I felt it was only right to give it due justice and be in the classroom area, protected from the downfall of rain that is happening right now. But with that said, you're gonna have to deal with the noise of rain. I know some individuals in the past have really been upset because the leaves were crunching and the wind was blowing. I'm in the middle of the woods, it, so you're gonna have to just deal with it. If you don't like it, I don't know, come back next week. On a few housekeeping items. As always, housekeeping item number one is thank you for making this possible. Leave comments below and questions below. They won't get answered until next week. Next, I really like the lighting in here. I'm looking in the monitor. I think it's good even with my hood up. I mean, we could drop my hood down. It brightens up my face a little bit, but I don't know. I like it just up. I, so that's how I'm gonna film. The lighting is great in here. And final order of business before the questions begin, which I know, ah, nail biter, right? With the summer months approaching, my schedule is very busy. Almost every single weekend is filled up. So leading up to them weekends requires sometimes a lot of preparation to get things done. I'm gonna try my very hardest to keep a video a day coming out. I know I normally take maybe one or two days at the most a week off. I'm gonna try to keep up with this schedule, but if it doesn't work out, I apologize ahead of time. So don't think because I might not post in a day or two that I've just given up on it by any means. I might have to cut back ever so slightly just to keep up with the workflow on the other end. So I'm gonna try my hardest, but thank you at the end of the day for the support. Now we can get on to the questions. Wayne. This is a new 50 millimeter lens, 1.8. It, it is just, man, buttery behind me, right? Delicious. Okay, questions. Have you done a best way to sleep in a wool blanket system? If so, what's the YouTube address? I'll uh, leave that link below. I did, there's basically two systems. In my mind, fold over, which I just did a video on how to keep your feet tucked in. And everybody that was a smart ass and said, oh, we'll get a longer blanket, that's a king size blanket. It fits me fine. The purpose of the video with the fold over method at the bottom was so when you mooch around, your feet don't kick out. Come on, guys. Second method is the burrito method. That'll get you tight in there, nice and warm. It's almost like a mummy bag at some point. So I'll put the link below and check that out. Dan, I noticed in some of your earlier vids you wore a wedding ring. Not anymore. Number one, why not? Number two, how does Mrs. Colecracker feel about that? Number three, have you tried silicone rings? I do have three silicone bands that I wear off and on. My original band that I got when we were married doesn't fit my finger anymore. My knuckles, I don't know, they grew and I, <laughs> this is what I contribute my knuckles getting bigger too is because I'm out here now full time. So I used to always do bushcraft stuff, but because I'm constantly out here working, it's almost like a mechanic. You ever just meet an old mechanic and his hands like <laughs> crushing you? My hands have just got so much thicker. <laughs> it, this is a crazy conversation, but that's why my wedding band doesn't fit. My wife's all right with it. We love each other. So she's all right with it. I don't think a ring, I mean, I don't know. But I don't wear it a lot because I just, it, it, they get all busted up. Even the silicone rings, I break more of them than you can even imagine. Is there a warranty on them? I don't know, I should probably check into that. Now the reason I'm gonna read this question is because I laughed out loud when I first read this. It's a little bit long, bear with me. Hey Cracker, I want to answer my own question from last week, why are fire trucks red? Now, I love that he set himself up for this joke, figuring he's gonna get on both question and answers. Congratulations, because you did it. This is what he said. 
Because they have eight wheels and four people on them, and four plus eight is 12, and there are 12 inches in a foot, and one foot is a ruler. And Queen Elizabeth was a ruler, and Queen Elizabeth was also a ship. And the ship sailed the seas, and in the seas are fish, and fish have fins, and the fins fought the Russians, and the Russians are red. Fire trucks are always rushing around. <laughs> That's hilarious and it's awesome you took the time to type that. That's great. That is awesome. <laughs> What's your favorite state park in Pennsylvania? Ricketts Glen is really nice, but I think Locust Lake State Park because it's just near and dear to me because I've camped there for close to, well, pretty much my whole life. Consistently for the last 20 years though, I've always been there at least once a year. So I just like, I hold that near and dear. So I just love being there and it's close to my house, it's easy. Was going back through your archives and watched your video on Camp Coffee. Has your technique remained the same or have you made tweaks and adjustments? There's nothing like a good cup of Camp Coffee in the mornings or any time of the day for that matter. I still make the coffee the exact same way. It still comes out really, really well. Recently though, and I'm gonna do a video on this, I got into pour over coffee. I'm gonna make a case and I'm bringing out the most high tech equipment from a drip kettle to the Chemex pour over to the scale, the timer. I love doing it. I do it at home all the time. I make my bulletproof coffee like that to die for. If you haven't made a good cup of pour over coffee or went to a coffee shop and got one, you need to try it if you're into coffee. It's awesome. Hey Bush Drunk Dan, that's really what you're gonna call me? <laughs> what do you put on your strop as a compound agent? Just the green compound agent? <laughs> I know that doesn't give any clarity on that question. It just seems to work. It's a green compound. You just go on green buffing compound and it just it, that seems to be the best, I think. Joshua Kelikovich, and the only reason I'm saying that name is because he wants to know, do I win something for being the 10th viewer? Since you asked, okay, shoot me an email and I'll get you out a t-shirt. All right, um, he's like, just kidding. All right, well, I'm just kidding about giving you a free t-shirt. <laughs> no, you got a private message me, I'll get you a free t-shirt. On a serious note, uh, how does someone become a survival instructor? He goes on and says, Give me a few pointers. Now somebody else asked this later on in the, in the questions and somebody asked this the other day and I remember that that sheet is probably over to your waiting to be answered. So let's just answer this right now, right here and now and get it over with. I'm not saying get it over with like I don't wanna answer it. Let's just talk about that for a second. So I think there are a couple key factors you need to take into consideration when you think about survival or wilderness living instructor. The first being, you need to realize if you're giving survival skills to individuals, we're really giving them techniques that can save their life at some point. So you need to make sure that those techniques are trusted and are going to work and that you personally have experienced a large majority of them in action. Now, most of us are never gonna be in a survival situation. I get that. Most of us can't go on a show that they drop us off and I can put stuff to the test. I get that. But you need to spend a lot of time outside trying these things and putting yourself in rough situations. Not harmful situations, but just rough situations. Maybe not sleeping, not eating, and understanding that there's some responsibility on your end as that instructor giving that advice that you're giving them people the techniques and skills to keep themselves alive. And I think that's a huge responsibility that we should take upon ourselves. At the end of the day, it's not your responsibility. I mean, if they get themselves in a bad situation, but they came to you for specific information, you need to give them the best information possible. And I, I try to do that by all means. Otherwise, you don't teach the information. Secondly, it is awesome to be able to do this full time, but the aspect of it in the end is that it's a business. So you need to also have that business savviness to you also because you can't just run a class. You have a lot of things in the background going on from insurance to liability to finances to marketing. So you have to also want to take that on. So. Sometimes it takes away from being able to be out here as much and it just becomes a very hectic schedule of being in the woods all the time and then going home and starting your business end of it and having to work with that. So it's, it becomes a full-time job. But uh, it's really just spending time and getting good information out there. Good luck. Can you show some more methods of cooking without cookware, field expedient methods? I've done a ton of these videos. I should have made like more of a playlist on just them 
but you're gonna have to just look through my channel. I've done a lot of them, especially, I'm gonna say about three months ago, I was hammering out different cook systems. So you're gonna have to just check that out. We'll address them sooner or later, it'll come back around. Hey Dan, are you following other alone contestants to see how they're capitalizing on their exposure? Who is doing a good job? Has that exposure been good for bushcraft? This is what I think speaking with a lot of other individuals that are on the show, although you get exposure and people recognize you from that, you don't get near what you think. It's not because you're on a show that you're successful. I, I just don't believe that. In my own case, I don't believe that at all. It might open some extra doors compared to somebody who wasn't on a show, but at the end of the day, it's really how hard you work at your business. So I think that even if you don't get on a show like that, you can still be successful with everything. I don't wanna say I don't follow other people that run a show. I consider a lot of them friends, so I just talk to them about that, and I'm like, hey, yeah, you're doing good? Yep, uh, uh, and that's about it. So I can't really say who's doing awesome or who's not, but I don't think this show is really that much of a deal breaker. And I mean, that's my own opinion. I was on a show. I think it comes down to that just opening some doors, and then you really have to just work hard on it. What bushcraft wipies do you prefer? I just use normal toilet paper. Can you choose one item as your favorite piece of gear? I know a lot of people probably thinking, oh, it's gonna be that ax, it's gonna be that crazy ax we're always talking about, but actually, oh, I, I, I can't make that noise. My belt pouch is probably my most treasured piece of gear that I have. I think it's just because I made that belt pouch back when I was just starting all this. It's been with me through thick and thin. That's like probably my favorite gear. If I had to take, and that has zero bearing on survival or bushcraft though. I mean, it's just a crazy pouch, but I just love it. Why didn't you answer my question from last week and then Timberwolf? I don't know. No, um, now with the questions not being answered, I do try my hardest to answer all of them. Sometimes I feel like when I click show more in the question list, it reloads and I don't get all. So if I ever do miss a question, I sincerely apologize. Just post it to next week, all right? Jeez, jump down my throat about everything. Have you tried the new Yingling yet? No, I haven't. My dad keeps telling me about it. I feel like he wants to put it on tap. I'm like, we better get a six pack before we go putting that on tap. So uh, no, I haven't tried that. Are you around during the time between April 25th and May 14th? Look me up at Kettle Creek State Park Lower Campground. I will be happy to share some food and drinks with you. If I'm, I don't know where Kettle Creek State Park is even at, but if I am in that area, even traveling through, I'm taking you up on the food and drinks. You're gonna be like, can this guy leave? The rest of your family's like, who is this person? Get him out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, I'm saving this. When you come to Texas, bro, do you even lift? <laughs> John Burton. <laughs> All right, John. You saw how muscular I am when you're here. Like, I'm like, man, alpha male. And I don't know when I'm coming to Texas. I haven't been in Texas, and I was in Texas once when I was nine to visit my uncle. Are you inviting me to Texas? Because if you are, maybe I'd come down there. Why do you minimal car camp? <laughs> so when I put this question on my paperwork, I thought they were asking like, would I? Oh, that's what it does say. <laughs> I thought they were asking there when I read it, the way I read it, that why do I minimal car camp? And I was like, well, the skit was that we can't fit anything else in the car. I would do a minimal car camp. If I had it up to me, like I would do that. The problem is it's like a big backpack. You have this whole car, you just keep jamming stuff in it. And everybody, if you watched my vlog yesterday, you saw that I have a like an old work van I drive around. So you wanna talk about packing gear in there. Not good. Dan, I'd like to invite you to our next BBA meeting that is here, held here in Arkansas. We practice our 12-step program at the campsite. Six steps to the beer, six steps to the nearest tree. Our membership is growing, feel free to be part of it. Yeah, Bushcraft Beer Drinkers Anonymous. Love the question and answer Wednesdays. Keep up the good work. <laughs> I love that. Do you have t-shirts made of that? Because I would want one of them t-shirts. I really do. Have you ever been on a dog sled? No, but them guys, they seem like they're hardcore badasses. So I'd like to do that. Backpacking gear. That's just th a question mark. Does that mean you want to know, do I use any backpacking gear? So if I had answered that quickly, I would, off the top of my head, what comes in there is like wiggy sleeping bags I use, Eno hammock and the Thermarest Z pad. Other than that, it's mostly like more traditional heavyweight kind of gear. Love the channel. Could you say hey to my daughter, Amber? Hey, Amber. She's 22 months old and asked to watch co Cracker every night before bed. Andrew shook. Cool, Andrew. 
Dan, after a long day of bush drinking, what do you prefer more? Riding your rollerblades in traffic while holding two pairs of scissors, go shoot a bell-fed automatic weapon, or go mulch trees with your tree tripper? Uh, you got bush drinking, and then what you do is you get pliers, and then you start to do the same crazy people! Crazy people! Get out of here! Do you ever get tired of Joe Robinett complaining about gathering wood? That struggle is real. Do you sharpen or file the back of your fixed blade knives? I want to improve my success with the ferro rod to start fires. Most of the knives I purchase have that good sharp 90 degree spine. If they don't, if it's something like a Mora, I do take a file to them now that I have belt grinders and things like that at my shop. Belt grind them and they're good. What the hell, didn't you say you were going on the Townsends? So Townsends, 18th century, I was out there last week. We filmed a ton of footage. It was awesome. They're a great group of people. I'm so excited for everybody to see the videos because I know they're gonna do just a bang up job with them. So it's gonna be cool. So go over and check out their channel. It's awesome. You ever hunt with a slingshot? No, I haven't. I don't have a lot of experience with a slingshot. I shot a little bit when Fowler was down here last summer with me. My instructor, Mike, who you've seen some of the videos, was shooting a slingshot. <laughs> Full draw, wham, lets it go. The ball bearing smashes his thumb. He thought he was gonna have to get his thumb amputated. He still complains about the pain in his thumb. I just, and that's not why I don't shoot it. I just, I don't know. I just never really got into it too much. How tall are you being that heavy? 6'3". <laughs> Since you're making your own brand of knives, will you be making tiny hatchets like the Gransford Brook mini hatchet? No, I won't be. I would love to get involved in axe making, but that's just a whole new skill set, totally different than how we're gonna be making our knives. So that isn't in any of the foreseeable future. My question, what do you think about while you're trying to fall asleep? <laughs> I don't know, I like people whisper sweet nothings in my ear. In all reality, I hate going to bed. I don't know if there's a fear of going to bed kind of thing. If there is, leave that in the comments below. But I like to be so tired working on something or just watching videos or reading that I can literally put my head back and just fall asleep. Like that's how tired I want to be. I hate going to bed. I hate it. Waking up's a different story. I love to just, just stay in bed. But I don't, I don't know. I don't ever just sit like, hey, it's, I'm gonna lay down and try to fall asleep. I stay up until I cannot stay up anymore. And that's almost all the time. I made a half inch by six inch ferro rod handle out of a shotgun shell by taking the pellets out and leaving the powder intact for emergencies. What do you think, good or bad idea? I don't think that's a good idea because you're with that hot spark and the gunpowder in your hand, kaboom. Ever been to Alaska? No, I was looking at to do a trip up there that I would hike and kayak and end up at Dick Krenicki's cabin. I just didn't get up there yet. Serious question, have you ever had a fire get away from you, like start spreading? Yeah, yeah I have. Two occasions, once I was in high school and we were dumping gasoline on the fire, boom, everywhere. I threw the can off to the side, can dumped fire everywhere, it was pretty crazy. Another situation was I was just in a dry area, had a couple sparks jump and it went, it wasn't too crazy but I had to run around in a little bit of a panic and try to put it out. So you just gotta be careful with that stuff. Can you do a video on making a wigwam like yours? No, <laughs> no. Now here's why I'm gonna say no. Because first off, I should have made a video when I was making that, but it got me so distracted, it was very nerve wracking to do that. So I just didn't have the patience to do the video and I wasn't making consistent videos at the time. But what I will say is that if I do ever down the road decide to make another wigwam, I will. It's just such a tiring, intensive process and I had to cut so many trees. For how much people get crazy with me about, and I say that I'm not like hippie-ish at all and I, I don't wanna just go cut trees down just to do stuff if I don't need to, so that would probably have to be on hold until way down the road when I make another wigwam, if ever. So I'm sorry about that. I work out at home with dumbbells and it's difficult for me to get to the gym. Can you recommend a workout routine? Dumbbells are a great resource to have. You can really get a lot done with them. What you need to think about is just a lot of high reps and you need to keep moving. Now I'm all about lifting heavy weight and really adding weight onto things, but most people, if you throw 25 pound dumbbells in their hands and tell them to do 30 side raises, like 
they, they're not gonna do it with any good form. So slow your form down, take your time with your dumbbells and really just up your reps a little bit. One killer workout that um, Corporal's Corner, Sean Kelly turned me on to is a feeder workout, but you can do it anytime. So if I can remember correctly in my head, so tricep extensions, laying down on your floor, you stand up and then do hammer curls. That looked weird on the camera. But you wanna do, let me think here, 100 tricep extensions, 50 hammer curls for three sets, nonstop. Your arms will feel like they're gonna blow off your body. It's ridiculous. So, you make a living out playing in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah! That's awesome when you think about it. Cooking gear, stainless or cast iron, love the content. I carry a lot of stainless steel with me. I have water bottles, I have my pans, I have bowls, and that's like my everyday kind of carry around thing. The problem with cast iron is just the weight of it, but if I can have cast iron, it's definitely cast iron. I bought a rusty ax head at a yard sale, and while cleaning off the rust, discovered it has more pitting than I originally thought. Doesn't that suck? Man, I hate when I get a good designed ax, go home, start using a wire brush on it, and it just pitted. Oh, well, once you get the rust off, you just want to keep it really well oiled. A little bit of pitting isn't going to really hurt the performance. Just sharpen it up and keep it oiled. You'll be fine. Why do so many survival gear companies feel the need to include bottle opener on their gear? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's from the old Swiss Army knife days that everybody just puts it on there. Plus, all of a sudden now we all are bush drinking. So it's letting us open up our beers. I got a question for you, bacon while camping, yes or no? You gotta be kidding me. You're gonna ask me that question after like nine question and answers already? Yes, bacon is it. I would eat bacon all day, every day if I could. I mean, if you're on a ketogenic diet, you wanna eat a lot of bacon, but come on. Hey Dan, what's your view on Mora brand knives? Like, dislike, don't care. Mora's are great knives for the price, just great all-purpose knives. And that's what category I would throw them in. Notice you had Kinkara sticker on your cooler. I love that people see the most minute details, Cool, at least you're real like observant to things. Yes, they sent me some rods. I've been using them a little bit and it's so lightweight and easy and simple that, and it's just cool. I think it's just a cool concept behind it. Why are your teeth so white? Do they look white? I don't know how they're so white. Brush them, floss, mouthwash. So, I think that's it for questions for today. We'll save the rest for next week. As always, leave questions below. They won't get answered until next week. We'll be out of this. Hopefully it'll be a little bit sunnier, a little bit warmer out. I won't have to have rain jacket on and be all chilled sitting here, but I did have a good time with this. It was fun. I hope you all had fun. And until next video, stay in the woods, guys.